Hey, Stephen Young here doing the Junkyard Crawl with help from my friends at High Alkane Classics in Auburn, Mass. Thanks, guys. With something very special. This is a 1963 Jeep Wagoneer. In fact, this is the 315th Wagoneer ever built. We'll get to that in a second. Now, what made the Jeep Wagoneer special, it's the very first four-wheel drive, totally off-road capable family station wagon. The body on these things had all the creature comforts of, you know, a Ford station wagon or maybe a Plymouth or a Dodge, but it rode on a truck chassis and can totally go off-road. Now these were available with two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. Base price on this when it was new would have been $3,332, which was $743 more than the two-wheel drive version of this. But again, for that extra $743, you got all-wheel drive and driven front axle. And these were built for many, many years. In fact, 1963 through 1991, that's a 28 model year run. Not a whole lot of other cars were built in that long period of time. Now the engine in this one is worthy of note. Only four, 63, four and halfway through 65 where you find the Hemi. Yup, there's a Hemi under the hood of this thing. This is the Willis Tornado 236. It's a single overhead cam engine. There's a chain here and underneath this aluminum casting, you'll see that there is actually um, an aluminum cylinder head and the word tornado is in full effect right there. Now we'll get to the Hemi part in just a second, but other details we see on this are the Holley 2300 series two barrel carburetor, very similar to what's found on certain Ford vehicles. In fact, the bones of this thing were also used on 446 pack Mopars. Yeah, 346 pack Mopars, that same basic carb family, the 2300 series Holley two barrel. But the money on this thing again is about the all wheel drive system, four wheel drive on this. We can see right here, the leaf springs, which are as rugged as anything found on a Gladiator pickup truck, the beam front axle, it's a Dana 44, and again, worn locking hubs on this here. Now, the thing about that engine right there, that's 230 cubic inches, and it makes 140 horsepower at 4,000 RPM thanks to that high flow Hemi cross flow head. But here's the other thing it makes 215 foot pounds of torque way down at 1700 RPM. And that's because it is an under square design, which is to say that the bore is actually smaller than the stroke by almost an inch. And that of course means that it's going to be a long stroke, high, low RPM torque maker. So uh, Kaiser really had their act together. High speed cylinder head, torque making lower end, best of both worlds. Now the only thing is these weren't that popular. They did suffer from uh, valve problems and even cracks to the front water pump area, that sort of thing. So after halfway through 65, these were replaced with AMC six bangers and AMC and Buick supplied V8s. But let's go over here to uh, Motor Trend magazine. This is the you know, March 1963 issue. And of course, Motor Trend never makes mistakes with one exception. Canceling Roadkill's Junkyard Gold. Canceled? What do you mean we're canceled? Just saying. But in here we have Jeep Becomes a Gentleman right there. So inside we'll take a peek and see what they're talking about. And here we'll see the test of the new Wagoneer right there. And it says at the top, up to now, most four-wheel drive enthusiasts, of which there are thousands, have been faced with the problem of two cars in the garage. Jeeps and other four-wheel drive vehicles are the greatest for tooling over cow trails or across uncharted deserts, but for the most part, they're either too slow or too cramped and uncomfortable for freeway cruising. The Wagoneer is one vehicle that's equally at home anywhere. It's also big enough for the whole family. And up here, here's the magic of that Tornado 230 overhead cam Hemi engine. The relatively long Long stroke to bore ratio brings the torque peak in at a rather low RPMs, 210 foot pounds at 1700, which means that this engine will really buckle down and pull when the going is rough and slow. But out on the highway, the high horsepower peaking speed allows the Wagoneer to keep up with traffic and still have plenty left for passing. That's all about that Hemi head. And what are we talking about when we say Hemi head? Well, here on the bottom right, look at it right there. You can see the valves 
open toward the center of the cylinder bore center line that unshrouds them. Double rockers, well, actually double lobes, double rocker arms, single overhead cam, but that's a Hemi right there, cross flow cylinder head. So again, yeah, that's a Hemi. And the craziest thing is how the front axle on this is a live axle, but there was an option, that circle right there, that's the torsion bar, articulated beam axle, which was an option on all wheel drive for 160 bucks. It says here, single pivot front axle allows differential to swing with curbside half. Short upper arms tie into torsion bars at their inner pivot joints. And here's the torsion bar right here. Uh, again, no leaf springs on that one. The idea being it would sort of be a better ride than these truck-like leaf springs with the coil springs and the articulation. I don't know how many of those were sold. I've never seen one. But again, this is the more basic uh, leaf spring and live axle. And again, this was $743 more than the two-wheel drive version. Now, getting back to that low production number on this thing, uh, let's do something here. We'll open the door. <laughs> okay, uh, let's pull this out of the way and go to the A pillar, Shane, and you'll see right there the Willis tag right there, Kaiser Willis, if you will, and it says 14141-10315. This is the 315th Wagoneer ever built. Kind of cool. I mean, everything has to start somewhere. If that said 0001 <laughs> or anything under, say, 50, it would probably have been from the very first day of production. By number 315, they're probably into a couple, two, three days of production. you got to remember that, you know, everything starts somewhere, but usually the first 50 or so are sometimes built in slow motion. They call them pilot builds. And in some cases, they're sent to magazines and even stuff before the assembly line starts. They send those out for photography and for magazine use. But again, the 315th. And again, there was a 20 28 year model run of these things, uh, 1963 through 1991. And this is the 315th of that, that chimney. All those bricks are built on this thing right here. Now the beauty of the Wagoneer, of course, is the full-sized wagon type body. Yeah, you can't get that door open, but again, designed by Brooks Stevens, who also did the 1949 Jeep wagon, the station wagon and the pickup truck, but plenty of room in the back. Now this one is pretty austere, but as you get into the 1980s, when uh, Chrysler Corporation purchased Jeep uh, from AMC and purchased AMC, uh, you get into the Jeep Grand Wagoneers with wood siding, leather interiors, $30,000 sticker prices. And those things made big profits for Chrysler Corporation uh, in the 1980s. But again, the same basic bones as we have right here. So that's the story of uh, the 315th Jeep Wagoneer. A true dynasty really is happening here. 28 model year run and here it is languishing in a New England junkyard. Uh, again, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel and come back tomorrow for more Junkyard Crawl.